it's encouraging to me to see people pursue that and take that step of faith. And uh, just talking to Robert, one of the guys that was, that was in the video, and uh, he actually came on Tuesday, and then he came out on Thursday, um, actually called on Thursday afternoon just before we were to leave for home, and he, he actually um, called and he said, you know what, I, is there still room? Can I still get baptized? It took him some time to think things through, and, you know, a wonderful young man, a professor at the University of Waterloo, smart, intellectual, amazing, and we've talked over the phone, and I said, uh, and, and he, he even told me, you know, Pastor David, I don't really understand everything, but I do want to take this step because I feel this is my next step in my journey. And then I, I just responded, I said, you know what, sometimes God doesn't expect us to understand everything, but he does want us to have faith and to take the step of faith. Sometimes in the natural, we can't fully comprehend all the things that are happening even in the world, but we can just have faith in God. We can put our faith and trust in God and say, okay, God, here I am. I trust you. And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning, about this, this life that, that God has promised to all of us, uh, life of fullness, spiritual fullness, and life of uh, living, living a life empowered by God. Uh, and, and the title of my message sort of is, is, is kind of goes along with what's going on even today, but, but just in general, um, there seems to be like a wave happening right now. People, everybody's talking about the second wave. But the title of my message is Above the Waves. Because I want to encourage you in this time, I think we all need an encouragement, just like um, people have needed it all the way back in history. We always need an encouragement that we, as Christians, we have something greater. We have something powerful that lives in us, and that's God himself and his spirit. And we can be above the waves. You know, if you, if you look, at, look at the news and just turn around, everybody's going to say, there's, there's so many bad things happening in the world that we can get overwhelmed uh, if we focus on the headlines and news and things that are happening. And people are desperate. And the top people, some of the people that I'm talking that are not even following the Lord, they're not uh, confused and hurt and depressed and anxious about the future and what's happening. And, and in all this, uh, I feel like God is calling people and inviting people and working on people's hearts and, and making sure uh, the to let people know, we are to let people know that, that really God can on, only be the only one that can satisfy. He can truly be the only peace that we are longing for. He can truly fill our deepest longings and our deepest needs. Ever since the beginning, since the Garden of Eden, God has designed us to be in perfect fellowship with Him. Then Adam and Eve sinned, died spiritually, and then ever since then, it's been a story of trying to reconnect into that fellowship with God, where the perfect unity is created between humanity and uh, God himself. And, and ever since then, God has been trying to find a way to show us that he loves us, that he cares for us, that he wants the best for us, that he wants to give us the power, that he wants to be there for us when we need him. So, um, really, when you, when, you look at, when you look at the story of God's love towards his creation, it's always been of God pursuing us. And God wanted us, wanting us to be in a perfect fellowship with him. And uh, this past, I was reminded, I was uh, preparing for this message, this past summer when I went out camping with my boys, um, we, we were out on... Uh, close to Grand Bend uh, in a park camping for a few days. And we usually always love to go to the beach and swim and, and just enjoy the, the Lake Huron. And one of, the, one of the days that we went out, there were, these, there were these huge waves that just showed up out of nowhere. It was really windy. It was a beautiful day, but it was still really windy. And it wasn't really safe to go into the waters. Um, and then I told my boys, okay, I'm going to go try to test it and see how it is. And, and then, you know, we'll see if it's safe to go in the water. But Little did I know, as soon as I started walking in, the waves were just crashing over me, pulling me under, and I just couldn't. I personally wasn't feeling too ambitious to stay in water. So I told the boys, you know what, boys, we're just going to stay on the beach. We're going to go do some fun. We're, gonna, we're not even going to go there. And in a few minutes, or just we were at the beach hanging out, I, I see another set of boys over there, uh, maybe in te their teenage years, and I see them uh, just fearlessly, they pick up their, they're picking up their boards, and they're just running into the waters and going, trying to catch the waves. <laughs> Fearless, not afraid of anything, just trying to go and, and have some fun. 
And uh, then I thought to myself, man, am I, am, what am I doing? Like, this is, I was reminded of my days when I was actually a teenager. Like I was talking when I was in those teenage years. I was fearless. I didn't care about anything. But I've sort of kind of become comfortable. I didn't really want any challenge. Uh, but still, we didn't end up going. But I was just encouraged to see that there's, there's, there's people out there that, that um, they know they're safe. And they'd have courage. And, and if I can illustrate it in this way, the board that the boys were using, the board to surf on the waves or, or help them catch the wave, is, is in our own Christian experience, is really Jesus Christ and his spirit in us. And when we, when we have that in our life, it's so much more easy, it's so much easier to, to catch the wave and to coast through life uh, with, with him uh, under our feet. He sort of gives us the balance to coast. And this life is so much more exciting when we coast through life with God. You know, I watched, you've probably seen this movie, uh, The Soul Surfer, and, and this, this person that, that didn't have an arm, and she was a surfer, and she came to the competition, and, and she was surfing. That was her life. That was her story. But the testimony of, of, of her overcoming whatever she needed to overcome to become uh, the world champion and her, her ability to catch the waves... And using that as a testimony. But for me, when I watched that movie, just actually recently we watched it with the family. And I was really reminded again how exciting, exhilarate, exhilarating it, this life is when we have the Spirit of God in us. When we live this life to the full. You know, Jesus, when he was talking about the life, he says, I've, I've come here to give you the life in full. I want you to experience the life in full. Not a boring life. Not a... Not so exciting life when you wake up in the morning, like you're sort of like, oh, why, you know. But actually, Jesus wants to give us an exciting life. That's why he came. And um, when talking about the excitement, just sort of like to, to, to um, give you some, my main point that I want to build things around is, is, is simply this. Uh, life empowered by God is life covered by God. Life empowered by God is covered by God. So that means that in, in everything that we do in life, if we have the power of God in us and if we rely on his power, we're covered. We're taken care of. We don't have to worry. We don't have to concern ourselves. We don't have to uh, overanalyze things and overthink things. We know that we are going to be covered. When I go out with my boys and whatever we're doing, they know that daddy is always there. And I, and I always tell them and I always make sure to, to let them know that I've, I've got their back. No matter what's going on, I have their back. The fear do, does come into our life when we are separated from God and when there is a separation, which is a sin. And we, when we walk away and we try to do things in our own strength, in, 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 in our own way, and, and then um, when, we, when we separate ourselves from God, we realize that, that we can't do this life Life it doesn't get easy. It gets harder when we try to do things in our own strength, when we try to accomplish things in our own strength, when we try to overcome a temptations, sin in our own strength. It's impossible to do it without God. So if you look at the Bible, there's uh, David, who we, on, we know for the story of him overcoming Goliath and all the things that he's accomplished, one of the greatest kings that ever lived. But if you look at his story, and, and one of the things that, that really has um, separated him was, was when Samuel came to, to look for a king and ask for a king. The, there, was, there was all of his brothers, they were not fit, but then David showed up. And then uh, the story, just want to read this verse in 1 Samuel 16, 12, 13. He says this, so Jesse sent for him. He was dark and handsome, with beautiful eyes, and the Lord said, This is the one, anoint him. So as David stood there among his brothers, Samuel took a flask of oil, olive oil, and he had poured it onto David's head. And the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on, and, and Samuel returned to Ramah. So uh, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of God himself, was upon David, and it was empowering David. And every single thing that happened from there on in David's life, even though he was a young boy that probably didn't fully understand the uh, extent of it, he knew in his heart that God was always with him. If you read the story of, of all the way uh, from the pasture, fighting the lion, fighting the bear, then going to fight the Goliath, and all those things that have happened in his life, he has always had the courage 
of the Lord upon him, which was the Holy Spirit that was on him to help him get through things. He knew that he was covered. And this same power that David possessed in his life is available to us today, right now in this moment. The same power that David walked in, the same courage, the same victory that David had, the same attitude and mind that he had is available to us today as well. Do you believe that? Because what happened is, is in reading the scriptures and, and, and leading up to when Jesus came, we, can, we find a story of, of, of uh, in John, 1 John 3.16, our favorite, my, one of the most known verses says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes may have eternal life. We see that just before Jesus came onto this earth, we see that there was a, the nation of Israel was suffering under oppression, under the evil ruler, Herod. There was a lot of things that were happening at that time. They were looking for a solution. They were looking for a savior. They were looking for someone to come alongside, They were waiting for a Messiah to come and deliver them. But now, he didn't come, Jesus did not come to deliver them from Herod or Roman Empire. He came to bring an a different kind of kingdom. And that was the kingdom that John preached about. If you look at the, uh, the life of John, who also was in the scripture, if you read, when, when uh, an angel came to uh, John's dad and, and, and was saying that uh, his wife is going to have a son. His name, he's going to name him John. He's going to be mighty and powerful. And he's going to be full of the Holy Spirit, who also was full of the Holy Spirit himself. John was sent to prepare the way for Jesus. Bear the hearts. And his message was very simple. Repent and believe. The kingdom of God is here. That same kingdom that Jesus came to bring is here among us today. And it's got nothing to do with our government. It's got nothing to do with who is in charge. You know, in this, in this time of elections and all the things that are happening in the world, uh, everybody's trying to be a politician. <laughs> it's got nothing, this kingdom has nothing to do with Trump or Joe Biden has nothing to do with any, any, any person that's involved in any politics. This kingdom has to do with the only thing that, that we can control, and it's with our heart. It is with ourselves. So allowing uh, Jesus to come into ourselves, to come into our heart and our life, and to be the Lord of our life is the step that, that we all have to make. And if you look at John's life, uh, he was one of the first ones that we ever read in Scripture about the baptism. John was preaching the word. And he wanted people to take a step and repent and, and be baptized for the repentance of sins. And because people were hurting and in pain so much at that time, uh, they, were, they were inspired. They, they wanted an answer. So they were, look, they were running to John and, and they were convicted in their spirit. They needed to find a better way. So they were going in thousands to John. John was such a powerful preacher, an, an incredible communicator, that even Jesus showed up to his baptismal service. Jesus shows up, he gets baptized by John, and the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon Jesus, and we witness, John witnesses something that he's been waiting for his whole life. He's been preaching about his whole life. The Lamb of God who came to take, this, take away the sin of the world is here. And now all he has to do is just trust that and believe in that. And as he witnessed that, as, as, as Jesus himself was being baptized, uh, as he comes out of the water, as the, as the Holy Spirit came, the voice spoke from heaven, this is my son with whom I'm well pleased. Jesus starts his ministry. He goes in, into the next three years of his life, and he does all these incredible things and, and all the amazing things that are happening. But before Jesus leaves, he says something very simple. Actually, we can read that right now in, in, uh, in Matthew 11. Actually, let's just read it here. John 14, he says this, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of truth. So Jesus comes to fulfill this kingdom, which, which, is, which is all about the spiritual and all about people's hearts. And he says, this kingdom is here, and it's going to be available to all of you. Once he leaves, the Holy Spirit will come. And then we see this promise come to pass during the day of Pentecost. We see that uh, apostles were yearning and praying and excited, and they could not wait for this power to become 
to come down from heaven and help them in their journey. And then what we see from there on is we see uh, thousands and thousands of people, and we see the Christian faith spreading all over the world. And we see people being changed, and we see people being delivered, and we see people being healed, and we see people experiencing this kingdom, which, which um, what everybody was waiting for. And that is the kingdom, and that is the solution, and that is the answer that this world right now is longing for. That is the kingdom that I'm longing for every single day to be a part of, to walk in, to move in, in this power of the Holy Spirit. Simply, three things need to happen in order for us to enter this kingdom and to have this Holy Spirit come upon us. And, and those three things are very simple. To acknowledge, to repent, and to invite the Holy Spirit. And, and a knowledge in part has to do, uh, be, to acknowledge is to acknowledge that we are not enough, that we can't deal with our own problems in our own strength, that we are not uh, gods. Acknowledge that, that, that Jesus is Lord and, and acknowledge that it is only by His Holy Spirit that we can accomplish things, overcome sin. Repent means to turn away from, from our sin completely. Whatever sinful ways we have in our life, to completely turn away and follow in the way of Jesus and the way Jesus is teaching, following the way of His commandments and His kingdom principles, which, which will flip our life upside down. And then from repentance... Uh, just, just before I go to the, to the invitation of the Holy Spirit, repentance is, is um, it's a doorway for us to enter into all the great things that God has for our spiritual life. It is a doorway when we, when we, when we repent, it's, we open up the door for, for the Holy Spirit and His power to move freely into every area of our life. Not only some areas, but repenting in, 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 the, in the areas of life that we even probably never even thought of. You know, I see it in, in even people that I talk to. Uh, I see them not fully repenting in some areas. And, and God, God is not able to move fully in certain areas in our life if we are not repentant and if we don't have a repentant heart. God can only move when we fully surrender and repent to Him. And then from there on, go from the repentance into invitation where we, uh, which is what we did this morning, Pray for the Holy Spirit to come and invite the Holy Spirit into our life to be a part of us, to help us, and to, to empower us. To empower us to do this life. No matter how bad it is, no matter how terrible things are, ask the Holy Spirit to be our strength, to be our power. You know, sometimes I try to do things in my own strength, and I know that I will not be able to accomplish those things in my own strength. And then I'm reminded that I can invite the Holy Spirit into my life to help me to do those things. Whether it's dealing with my own pride, uh, which, which we all have and we all struggle with, the human pride where, where you have to say, you know what, uh, I can't deal with this in my own strength. I, need, I can't overcome this in my own strength. I need the power of the Holy Spirit in me to overcome uh, that pride. Inviting the Holy Spirit daily, which is sort of my daily practice is, is that I do every single day when I wake up. I say, come Holy Spirit. I invite you. Help me to make the decisions today. Help me to, to, to um, my, my emotions every day. To, to just help me to navigate those things. Because decisions and emotions, emotions uh, when, we, when we try to, to, in our own flesh, in our own strength, usually, usually, they don't turn out to be the best. When I haven't done this, there was many days when I haven't done this, I usually overreact. My emotions, decisions that I make are not right. And usually I end up regretting and repenting and saying, forgive me. God help me. I need you, Holy Spirit. It is when, 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 when the Holy Spirit comes into our life that we have this power. And just towards the end of John's life, if you look at John's life and what was happening with him, uh, you'll notice that he came, he was, in the, he was in the prison. He was thrown in the prison because he was, he was um, uh, preaching. And uh, the main reason was uh, Herod didn't want him in the prison because he actually liked him. But his wife, 
didn't end up in, in prison. And then after all that's happened, John sends his disciples to, to confirm, con even though he knew that Jesus was the Lamb and the Savior of the world, he sent his disciples to Jesus to ask him if he was the one. And disciples go, and they, they have a conversation with Jesus. And then Jesus sends them back and says, why don't you just tell this to John? Just tell, tell him this. The sick are healed. The lame walk. People that are, people that are um, in captivity are being set free. The kingdom of God is here. And John got that confirmation. And, and uh, sometimes in our life when we face difficult things and when we go through troubles, when we go through troubled waters, we need that confirmation of the Holy Spirit in our heart to let us know that Jesus is the one. He's the one that we need in that moment. He's the one that gives us strength. He's the one that will make a way for us. He's the one that will do a miracle for us. He's the one who, that will provide for us. He's the one that will give us the strength that we need in the moment. We need that reminder daily. Because just like David, or a lot of great men that have had the Holy Spirit, they have wandered off easily and sinned because um, they, they let their flesh come out and make decisions for them. So in order for us to, to walk in the way of God, we need to uh, do this daily. Invite the Holy Spirit into our life. And ask the Holy Spirit to help us. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide us. Ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Ask the Holy Spirit to, to, to reveal things to us that we were confused about, uh, that, that we don't know fully, that we don't fully understand. When, when, when you read a, a Bible verse or when you read a Bible, or when you read something, you ask the Holy Spirit to, to bring those words to life into you so that they would bear fruit, that you would understand fully the knowledge that God has for you. You know, uh, sometimes uh, I've seen it in my own life uh, when I really have the Holy Spirit reveal something to me and I really have a revelation everything changes everything completely transforms uh, it's like I've been praying for something for such a long time but then the Holy Spirit will reveal something to me and it's going to be like wow I've never seen this before now I know and that's what we need with our human mind we're, we have a hard time understanding things and, and sometimes we need more faith, like I, I told Robert. Sometimes you just need to have faith. You just need to trust God. Sometimes we don't have to fully understand everything. We might have all these questions. Well, God, why is all this happening? Why is the pandemic and this and that? And why is this bad happen and this bad and all this thing? And, and we, can, we can try to look for all the answers, but sometimes we just have to trust and have faith and say, Holy Spirit, be in control in my life so that I can walk in your ways, I can do your will. Life empowered by God is life covered by God. And it's only by His Spirit that, that as we walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, we'll be covered. We'll be taken care of. We'll, we'll be looked after. We don't have to worry. We don't have to concern ourselves. We don't have to uh, be uncertain about the future. As we walk in this power that comes from above, we can be certain that God is taking care of us, that God loves us, that he, that he is making a way for us. Amen? So in this moment, I want to pray for all of you. But at the same time, I want you to, to, to realize that um, there's only so many things that you can do in your own strength. And there's only so many things that you can overcome in your strength. And there's things in your life that, that you need the Holy Spirit to help you overcome. And it's only by His power that you'll be able to overcome. So, as we stand up right now, you may be asking this, you may, you may have been asked this question, is, is Jesus really the one? And Jesus has confirmed it to John, it's confirmed it to all of us, yes, I am the one that you need the most. I am the answer for all the, all the needs that you have, all the concerns, all the worries. And, and just trust me. Just su submit to me. And, and life is so much more exciting with God in it. 
In this moment, I want to pray for you. And just as you extend your hands, whether you're here or watching online, I just want to pray a prayer of, of repentance, a prayer, a prayer of acknowledgement and invitation of the Holy Spirit into our life. That He would lead and guide, that He would help, that He would be our strength as we move forward. Dear Lord Jesus, in this moment we acknowledge that we are nothing without you. That in our life we cannot accomplish anything in our own strength. And we repent for every time that we have tried in our own strength to, to do things in our own way. To deal with situations in our own way. We repent for our sin. We repent for, for our need to be uh, independent. We repent for every sin, for all the things that we've done and all the things that we haven't done that we should have done, God. We repent for all of it, God. In this moment, we invite you, Holy Spirit, to come into our life. We invite the power of the Holy One to come into our house and to dwell in us and to move in us and to give us, give us God, the power that we need right now in this moment. Give us the power for every day from now on to walk in your way and to do your will, God. To overcome because we are victorious with you in us. It is by your power, not by our strength, not by our might, but it is by the, by the power of the Holy Spirit that we can accomplish, that we can be above the waves, that we can be above the troubles, that we can coast, that we can have an exciting, live an exciting Christian life. Help us, God, in all the endeavors, God, and help us to, to be able to listen to your voice, to hear from you, and to walk in your ways the rest of our life. We commit all that we are to you, and we pray that you be with us as we go forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. Blessings on you. Have a wonderful week, and uh, we'll see you next week.